Hey everybody, it's Jeff here once again with the Freedom Nation podcast, and I am so excited to have my guest on today, Jen Drummond. Jen is a really interesting person. She is the world record holder for climbing the second highest uh, mountains on every continent. She's the first women record holder in that area. Jen, welcome to the show today. Oh, thank you so much for having me today. I am so excited to have you on. Really look forward to uh, hearing your story again. Um, Jen and I were talking. I've I've now met the first person who's climbed the second summits, and I had met in the past the person who climbed the seven summits, the first, you know, the highest peaks. So this is fun today to just have this conversation. And I think for those of you that are out there thinking about your bucket list and how you're going to do it. Jen's story, I think, is going to to really give you that extra little nudge, I hope, and hopefully not the way it nudged her. So, Jen, welcome to the show. Tell us your story. How'd you get to where you are today? Yeah, right? We all have this unique path, don't we? Yeah, so I was a stay-at-home mom. I mm -hmm. owned a business and hired myself out of a job so that I could be at home with my kids. They all got into school full-time. And then all of a sudden I was a little lost. Like, can I do something? But what happens if I'm not there, if they need me? And what does this look like? So I decided, you know what? When they get to college, I will start doing me again. But right now I'm yeah. in the season of motherhood and this is what it looks like. And then 2018, I got into a horrific car crash huh. that should have taken my life and didn't. Yeah. And I will tell you that it probably woke me up to living, to be honest with you. It was yeah. in that crash that I realized I don't get to choose when I die, but I sure get to choose how I live. And yeah. choosing to put my life on hold until my kids went to college wasn't really living, right? It was just staying in the status quo. So I started the epic bucket list, right? That you mm -hmm. talk about. I yep. 2019 was a year of the bucket list. And I'll tell you, it started with figuring out who I was again. I yeah. didn't even know what my favorite color was. If you would have asked me what I wanted for dinner, I wouldn't even know what to tell you because I just ate everybody's leftovers. And it's just, you lose yourself in some of the roles that we play. And so I took this year to be like, who am I? Like, I'm alive. I'm important. There's something I'm here to do. Otherwise, I would have been killed in that car crash. Mm -hmm. And so I needed to start getting back into me and figuring out what it is that I even liked or wanted to see or wanted to experience. And 2020 was coming up and I was turning 40 in 2020. Mm -hmm. I looked at my bucket list. I'm like, what do I want to do to signify the significance of being alive and launch this next decade with something amazing? And I was looking at my list, climb a mountain stood out because I'm like, okay. that's only going to get harder as I get older. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I want to do that on my list now while yeah. I'm young Maybe. and healthy. Let's start with that one because that may be... <laughs> Right. Like going 80 and climbing a mountain doesn't sound as fun, but doing a museum at 80, I can probably yeah, do there that. You go. Right? So like well, learning right, to so play started, guitar at 80 is probably a little easier than climbing a mountain. A hundred percent. I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask friends that are into mountaineering. I live okay. in park city. So there's a lot of people that are into climbing the mountains around me. And actually the general consensus was you should climb this mountain named Ama de Blom. Okay. So anybody who's listening, if you've seen a Paramount pictures movie, You've seen Ama de Blom because it's in the logo that the stars circle around. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, perfect. And it means the mother's necklace as a mom of seven children. I thought, hey, this it's, is calling it's me. Meant Let's do this. <laughs> it's, it's meant to be. There we go. Well, then if all of us can rewind in our heads of what happened in the beginning of 2020, yes. I wasn't climbing any mountain. In fact, I became a homeschool teacher to my seven beautiful children because COVID <laughs> shut down the world, including all schools. And abilities so to fly on day, airplanes like, to go to mountains all over the world. Yeah, right. You are staying at home. In fact, you're yeah. not even going to the grocery store for a couple of days there, right? It was crazy. So I was helping my son with his math homework one day. Mm -hmm. And he's like struggling. And so I'm doing that parent pep talk that we do. We do hard <laughs> things. You've got this. Like, don't you worry. My son looks up at me and he goes, if we do hard things, why are you climbing a mountain called I'm a dumb blonde instead of a real mountain like Mount Everest? <laughs> said, Ama 
da blom, not I'm a dumb blonde. Dumb but thank you. You know what? Finish your homework. We'll look at Everest. <laughs> I know, kids. So then he did and we did. And then he went to bed and I was still looking at Everest. And I thought, you know what? If he thinks this is the hardest mountain in the whole world, mm -hmm. I'm going to go climb it. And I'm yeah. going to show him that whatever our Everest is, we can summit. So I hire a coach. He's like, yep, I can get you ready. So I'm working with this coach and this coach sends me a book about becoming an uphill athlete. Hmm. So I get it in the mail, start reading it. And in the front of it, there's this foreword about a lady who got a Guinness World Record for doing something in the Alps. Hmm. I must have had a, like a really bad homeschooling day. I'm talking to my coach. And I'm like, I could have done that. Like my kids learned how to read on Guinness World Record books. Give me a chance of doing something amazing like this and I'll be the cool mom again. And my coach is like, I'll think of something. I'm like, okay, fine. Just, no, I'm not going. There's weird records there, right? Like I'm not growing oh, yeah. pumpkins. Yep. I'm not speed eating hot dogs. I'm not building a blanket fort, you know, from this side of the country to the other side, whatever. And my coach is like, we'll think of something. So a few weeks later, my coach calls me and he's all excited. He's like, Jen, Jen, I have the perfect record for you. I forgot. I'm like, okay. And he's like, I think you should be the first woman to climb the seven second summits. And anybody listening here, I was like, what did yeah. you say? Like, blah, 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 blah. He's like, listen, let me explain. He goes, it's the second highest point on each of the seven continents. Mm -hmm. It's only been done by one male. It's harder than the first seven. And you'd be yeah. the first woman to do it. And think about it, seven continents, seven mountains, mm -hmm. seven children. It sounds like a jackpot. I, seven like, is your number, lady. That's all seven I got to say. Seven is my number. <laughs> yes, it is 100% my number. So I said, yes, you know, let's do it. I haven't slept in a tent on snow before, but we'll, we'll figure, figure this out. <laughs> also, we'll never climbed a mountain out. at this point either, but just saying. <laughs> you know what? It is what it is. And that's the beauty of life. When you get into one of those near-death experiences, all of a sudden you don't care if you fail or if somebody else like boos on your idea or whatever else like that, because you're like, like you're going to die someday too. At least mm. I'm dying doing something crazy instead of sitting on my sofa watching television. Yeah. I stepped into the pursuit. It was f like, I view this world as my playground mm -hmm. and I have a clock that's ticking and I need to, I have this deep need to see and experience and explore and try things. I don't care mm -hmm. if they work out anymore. My Gen 1.0 was very much, how does this look? What is it? What's the success rate? Like all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Gen 2.0 is like, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Richard Branson book. Screw it. Let's do it. Just <laughs> Yes. I love it. Yeah. So you, you decided to go do this. Well, obviously they're very tall mountains, but Tell me a little bit about the difficulty of these, because in some cases it can be harder to climb these than it can be the seven summits. It is. Some of the, you got to think about it, K2 and Everest yeah. are two entirely different beasts, right? Yeah. So Everest, you climb the whole thing basically on two feet. I didn't use four, I didn't use my hands ever on Everest mm. when I climbed. When you're on K2, you have climbing sections for sure. You yeah. have the chimney, you have the black pyramid and K2 is so much steeper. Yeah. So it's interesting it, when you go to climb Everest, too. you don't even, yeah, you don't see the top of Everest till the last day. Okay. Right. It, like you weave around, you do this thing, you go to climb K2 and it's this huge triangle that's staring at you the entire time <laughs> you climb. And it is like, try me yeah. the entire time you're climbing K2, it feels like you're playing that game Frogger. Because yeah. it drops rocks like you wouldn't believe. And these rocks are these teeny tiny little pebbles that you'd maybe put in a fish tank. And yeah. you hear them going past your ears going. Zzz, zzz, zzz. And you're like, I know that's not a bug because there's no bugs at this yeah. altitude. But if they could cut your jacket open. Sure. That's how sharp they go because the momentum builds like crazy. Yeah. yeah. That is nuts. So yeah. how, you know, it's difficult enough saying, hey, I'm going to do one you know, one expedition per year, you added to the difficulty because you decided to do this on multiple continents and you were doing a couple of these per year. So you had to time out the seasons and everything else so that you're getting the right climbing seasons, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. The one advantage that I had is I'm doing the same activity over and over, right? So the fitness is moving from one to the mm -hmm. next. It's not like I'm running on this continent and cycling on this one and swimming on that one, which sure. is different muscle patterns and all the different pieces. So that was helpful. But yes, very much in the beginning, because I started this quest in 2020, yeah. was what country opened. Yeah. Right. So what country was available for tourism again? Mm -hmm. And then it was like, what season are we in for the mountain to climb? Yeah. And then it was coordinating all of that. And then some of the mountains took twice. So K2 was a two attempt mountain. Mount okay. Logan in Canada was a two attempt mountain. So there's just a lot that goes into it. Sure. Well, and that and money and everything else is not, not a cheap endeavor by any way, shape or form to do it. So tell me, you know, okay, so you finished this year in June, correct? Yes. June 1st, 2023. So what was it like when you finished that last one? Ah, it was so good. It's such a weird feeling to know you have 10 steps left. Yeah. Right. Like all of a sudden we saw like, oh, we're going to be 10 steps and this is done. And you almost want to pause and not yeah. take them. Yeah. Right. You're like, no, that means this whole thing is done. And it's given me so much meaning and purpose and all of these wonderful feelings. Right. But yeah. you do it. And when I stood at the top, I took in this deep inhale, as much oxygen as I could get out of the air as possible. And in that moment, everything disappeared. There's no time, there's no space, there's no distance, there's no cold. You just become this feeling of awe. Mm -hmm. And I wish we could hold on to that, right? But that's yeah. not life. So you exhale, you do a few more inhales and exhales, and then everything starts to return. And the world's the world. You're a human, time's available, and distance and textures and colors and freezing and all that stuff comes back. And then it's almost like you take your soul out of your body and you say, okay, I'm going to throw you out into this world and find you again. I just don't know how, where, or when. Mm -hmm. And it's that experience that reminds us it's so much the journey. Yeah. I think we try to sell ourselves on the concept that it's the summit, that we it's the destination, it's that top point, it's whatever. But truly, the moments of our lives are the moments in between those summits. Mm -hmm. And those are the stories that color our existence. And I'm so grateful for them. Yeah. And this isn't your last summit. You're just looking no. at them from different ways. Yeah. It's, yeah. It may or may not be another mountain, but it's right. another summit that you're going to put in front of yourself as what I would exactly. assume. Exactly. So tell me a little bit about how you've taken that experience and then morphed it around a little bit into your business now. Yeah. Well, so I was halfway through the pursuit. And I went out to lunch with a friend and my friend is an author. He's like, you need to write a book. He goes, I don't even like mountaineering. And I'm enthralled <laughs> with these stories. <laughs> and then he's like, it's so exciting and captivating. And it's interesting how much the things that happen on the mountain apply mm. to our everyday lives and the businesses that we're building and who we show up as people. And so what I did is I wrote this book and I take the reader on the adventure. So we okay. go to each one of the mountains, climb it together, extract a lesson that was pretty obvious in that particular climb, and mm -hmm. then give you tools to utilize it in your own life and help you go reach your own summits, whatever they may be. So that's been super fun, a big project, a big undertaking. And it's led me to being on stages. Yeah. I thought I didn't, I had no idea that I would love inspirational speaking and keynotes and motivational stuff. But I love it. I love it. I love being on stage, exchanging the energy with the crowd, watching those aha Jen, moments happen for people. And then even more so when someone reaches out Jen? to me afterwards and like, hey, your story gave Jen, me permission me? to do whatever. Or I thought about this or like we just all Jen? raise each other up. So the book brings you to the experience, it extracts the lesson, and then the lesson mm -hmm. you get to see, oh, this is how it's showing up in my life and how I can get to my summit with these techniques and tools. Mm -hmm. And so you've you've also been speaking around the, the country and all that. So what how has that experience been? 
Oh my gosh. I love speaking. I had no idea I'd like it either. To be honest with you, I thought I'd be weird on stage and I just love the energy exchange with the crowd. I love okay. it when people reach out after the speech and then say, Hey, this inspired me to do this, or I'm trying this, or I'm doing whatever. And I truly believe we're such a connected species. When one mm. of us does something, it elevates the water for all of us to make more possible. That's awesome. Uh, you know, let's look at the life lesson. You know, you had a near-death experience. So you said, okay, now I'm going to make this happen. You know, how can someone that is maybe sitting in a cubicle today as a cubicle warrior, and they're trying to figure out, hey, I want to get out of here. I want to do something. I want to have an experience like Jen's. What's that first step like? I think you have to select something and put it on your calendar so that you have a time frame, you have the idea, you locked in, and now that gives you something to work from. So now mm -hmm. you're back in today and say, okay, where am I at? What do I need to do to be able to make this thing happen that I just put in my calendar? And that's where you start. Yeah. And for you, that was Everest, right? So, you know, it's, there's only one time a year where you can really climb it. So if you had a deadline... <laughs> Literally. I did. I had a deadline, which totally helped. Right. Yep. And then if I missed that deadline, I'd have to wait another year. And mm -hmm. that's a lot of training, both mentally yep. and physically to get ready. And I wasn't willing to give that up. So you have to make the thing painful enough to okay. not do it. Right. Like you can't have it be pain. Like where are you going to assign the pain? Is yeah. it getting there or is it not getting there? And you really want to make it harder to not succeed than to succeed. I like it. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So let's switch gears now. Uh, okay. The book's coming out. So that's coming out when, by the way? Yes. Yeah, so the book comes out January 9 of 2024. It's in pre-order nice. now. So you get all the fun bonuses if you order ahead of time, okay. which I highly encourage you to do because you can be a part of my Everest challenge. So we I put like to together a 40-day Everest challenge where you climb Everest from the comfort of your home. <laughs> it's super fun. I've done it before with people and they're like, can't wait for the next one to come out. That is awesome. I love this. We've got the book coming out. So let's now switch gears a little bit and we'll talk about the fast five questions now. You ready? Perfect. Let's do it. All right. So first one, you wake up in the morning. Business is gone. You have a laptop computer, 500 bucks in your pocket, place to live. What are you going to do first? I'm going to figure out anything that my friends or I have that we don't need and sell it for a dollar more than what we bought it for and just do little teeny tiny incremental things that allow it to add up and start building the revenue stream. I like that one. Just a dollar more than what we paid for it. Perfect. Yes. I, I, it's amazing how many people I know that are worth tens of millions of dollars that literally sell something for a dollar more than what they bought it for. That's amazing. Don't complicate it, friends. Don't yep, complicate just it. Do it. <laughs> just do it. Second question. What's your biggest business mistake that you've ever made? Oh, I built it before I could afford it. Okay. Okay. So I had this idea of what my office should look like with color <laughs> copy machines and fancy sofas and all this kind of stuff. And I forgot that what pays the bills is sales. So I let mm -hmm. sales go on the side burner until I got a color copy machine bill. And I was like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? And so that woke me up to get out of this pretty office and start hustling to get these sales in the door. That is awesome. Yeah, that's so true too. I need it to be perfect, my perfect world. And my favorite, I think my favorite picture of all time is a picture of Jeff Bezos at, at the original Amazon office, which was basically his garage. And he's sitting there at this incredibly crappy table with books piled up all around the floor. And I'm like, that's where you start. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. It's not fun, but it's what you have to do. So do it. Exactly. All right. What's the best book that you would recommend for our audience? Okay. Well, of course mine. So go end. buy it. Break proof, <laughs> seven strategies to build resilience and achieve your life goals. I promise you, you're going to love it. Okay, so where do we go to get the bonuses stuff? So where yes. do we order? So to get you go the onto my website and you'll enter okay. in your little Q code that you did, and then we'll start sending you emails of all the fun goodness. So next question then, what's a tool okay. that you use in your business every day? Okay, so, so a tool that I use every day is this thing called Firefly's Note Taker, and he oh, enters cool. into all my business meetings and takes okay. all the notes. 
So I can just be present in the meeting and interact and not worry about missing something. I love them. That's awesome. Yeah, I've got one of those that I use too. I think it's phenomenal. It's interesting. Actually, Zoom now has it built in. They have their own version okay. built into it now too. But yeah, it's it, there. I've seen multiple of those and I think the world of them because I take horrible notes. <laughs> I do too. I do. And then I'm not listening. I'm like worried yeah. about writing things down. So it allows me to be more present. I love it. Okay. Final question. What is your definition of freedom? When you can authentically show up as yourself in all the environments you operate in. That is awesome. That is the Yay. best answer I've heard this year. Woohoo, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jen, how so your website is jendrummond.com, correct? Yes, yes. So please go there and visit. You'll learn about my book, speaking engagements, some of the challenges that I run. I also have all my social media channels there. So depending on Perfect. your platform or choice, you can figure out how to connect, reach out, say hi, rate this podcast so it gets shared with way more people. And thank you for listening today. You are wonderful. It was such an exciting, you know, just interview. I love the story and I can't wait to keep following you to see what the next big challenge is for you. Oh, thank what you is, so much. What's the next one on the horizon? What's the biggie on the horizon? I know. So the next one is I'm taking my three boys to Africa and we're going to go climb Kilimanjaro, which is the highest point there. I'm pretty which, excited. I haven't done okay. the highest point and it's a lot easier than Mount Kenya. I wanted to take him to Mount Kenya and then I took him out rock yeah. climbing. I'm like, we're going to Kilimanjaro. <laughs> Kilimanjaro will be You guys up. just need to, you <laughs> so, need to walk. <laughs> we just, I yeah. need you to walk. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Just be I'm rude. not putting you in rope puts and harnesses. So for sure. Yeah. Be, be super careful there. I've, I've talked to several, I've known several people that have climbed it and have gotten robbed <laughs> while they're there. So just be super careful. True. Uh, yes. But what a great experience for the, now how old are they? 17, 15 and 14. Okay. All right. Amazing experience for that time of life. Yeah, I'm hoping that we'll get some college essay material. So there you go. <laughs> like, you'll get something out of it. <laughs> yeah, something. We'll see. Hopefully something amazing. But yes. Well, Jen, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a fantastic interview. We had little technical glitches here and there, but uh, we'll edit those out as we go. But thank you so much for sharing your story with our audience and giving them some inspiration. Folks, we do these interviews for you. We do these Tuesdays and Thursdays of every week. So make sure you, first off, go to Jen's website, buy her book, because you want to know all these stories. But two, make sure you hit that little subscribe button wherever you're listening to this, whether it be on video or you're listening to it on the podcast. And give us a little upvote to say, hey, we're out there. So thanks a lot. And we'll see you guys back here the very next time. <music>